welcome to Garen's IAS. So, uh, in this video, we are seeing about uh, the prelims 2021 questions from environment and its related topics. So, this year, that is in 2021 prelims, uh, actually there were uh, quite of like when we compare the previous years, there were more questions that were asked from the environment and related topics. Okay, uh, so nearly this uh, this year it was like 23 about 23 to 24 questions along constituted from the environment and its uh, related topics so uh, most of the questions like there were questions uh, which or the answers of which you could have easily um, got if you have solved some of the previous year questions so such answers were there as well as certain uh, questions from the very static portions were there if you have revised well your basic uh, concepts you could have easily answered such questions such static portions were there there were, there were some tricky questions as well uh, so apart from those uh, tricky questions the other questions from environment and related topics were quite moderate or easy to moderate questions okay so uh, we are discussing uh, the question that is uh, code C and we are starting off with the seventh question in uh, code C question paper. So the question reads, see this this question it is uh, like it is an earlier uh, pattern of question that we have not seen for the past few years. Anyway, let's see the question. Statement 1 reads, the United Nations Capital Development Fund and the About Day Foundation have recently recognized Hyderabad as 2023 city of the world. In statement 2, Hyderabad was selected for the recognition for a year following its commitment to grow and maintain the urban forest. See, um, with regard to the 2023 city of the world, this, is, this was a current affair topic. It was there in the news. Uh, and Hyderabad is like, indeed, it is the only city which was selected from India to be awarded with this particular tag, that is 2023 city of the world. And uh, it has been organized, uh, like it has been um, recognized, this particular tag has been given by the um, FAO, that is Food and Agriculture Organization and About Day Foundation. Okay, so here it is actually the uh, organization that is being wrongly given, which means statement 1 here, it is wrong. And statement 2, yes, it is right. It has been uh, given uh, for the commitment for Hyderabad city for its commitment to grow and maintain the urban forest. So statement 2 is right here, statement 1 is wrong. So here uh, your answer should be option D, that is statement 1 is not correct, but statement 2 is correct. Moving on to the next question in this particular series, uh, that is question number 14. At the national level, which ministry is the nodal agency, agency to ensure effective implementation of scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers? Recognition of Forest Rights Act 2006. Forest Rights Act 2006. Again, uh, see, this particular topic, this is why we always insist you to revise your previous year questions. See, this particular um, answer you could have got it easily if you have solved a previous year question. And in our class also, we have solved that particular previous year question. In that, uh, you, there was a statement with regard to this particular act and the ministry. So, if you have solved that particular previous year question, definitely you will not make this particular answer wrong. Okay. So, here it is the Ministry of Tribal Affairs which is the Nodal Ministry coming here and your answer is option D. So, this is why uh, we say to constantly revise your previous year questions. So that particular question you could have easily got it if you have revised or if you have solved the previous year question. Again question number 24 in the series. Bisphenol A, BPA, a cause of concern is a structural or key component in the manufacture of which of the following kinds of plastics. Low density polyethylene, um, polycarbonate, polyethylene, terephthalate, then polyvinyl chloride. Okay, so here 
Uh, see, it is an industrial chemical which is used in wide variety of consumer products, uh, mainly like transparent plastic uh, bottles and all. So, it is mainly used in polycarbonate, okay, for uh, making of plastic for polycarbonate, okay. So, here yeah, the answer is option B. 25th question, triclosan which is considered harmful when exposed to high levels for a long time is most likely present in which of the following. Again, triclosan, it is, so these, uh, see these terms, it is quite often uh, we have seen in our day-to-day -day life, we are seeing it in our day-to-day -day life even when we are reading newspapers or articles, somewhere we will come across all these things, okay. So triclosan, it is actually uh, an ingredient which is used in consumer products, mainly like toothpaste, then soaps, detergents, in all these, this particular ingredient is being used. So, your answer here should be D, toiletries. The next question, yes, again, the uh, importance of solving previous year question is being uh, visibly uh, seen here. See, the vegetation of savanna consists of grassland with scattered small trees, but extensive areas have no trees. The forest development in such areas is generally kept in check by one or more or a combination of some conditions which of the following are such conditions. We have discussed in our class, we have discussed about uh, grassland ecosystem in our uh, class sessions. We have solved the very particular previous year question uh, with regard to ecological succession connecting this particular topic like why do forest ecosystem uh, why forest ecosystem is not replacing grassland ecosystem as a, a process of ecological succession. So there actually we studied that it is mainly due to the fire and water limits. Okay, so that was the answer for that particular previous year question. So if you have solved that particular previous year question, definitely very easily you can come to the answer so, so directly. So here, see. Fire is there, seasonal rainfall is there, which means both are two limiting factors, okay, uh, in the grassland ecosystem. So, here 2 and 4, you can go with 2 and 4 and the only option having both 2 and 4 is option C, which means 3 is also coming. Yes, definitely grazing herbivores. Herbivores is also helping to act as a check uh, for not converting this grassland ecosystem into trees, okay. Uh, like into forest ecosystem. So here 2, 3 and 4 is your answer. Option C is your answer. Again, the importance of solving previous year question. We have already solved in our class session. Now, uh, next question with regard to, yes, consider the following statements. Moringa or drumstick tree is a leguminous evergreen tree. See, Moringa or drum, uh, drumstick, it is uh, considered to be deciduous in nature, not evergreen. So, if you can uh, relate that, see first statement is wrong. If first statement is wrong, easily you can arrive at the answer option B, 3, 4 and 5 by elimination. Okay. So, uh, the second statement says tamarind tree is endemic to South Asia. Is it endemic to South Asia? See, it is native to Africa. Okay, it is native to Africa. So, second statement here it is wrong. And in, in India, most of the tamarind is collected as a minor forest produce. A very general statement, nothing uh, fishy in that. India exports tamarind and seeds of moringa. Again, a general statement. Seeds of moringa and tamarind can be used in the production of biofuels. Can be used. Again, there it is saying about a possibility. So, yeah, it can be used in the production of biofuels. So, that is also, if you use your common logic, it is also uh, correct. So, here we will go with option B, 3, 4 and 5. Next question. Yes, consider the following bacteria, fungi, virus. Which of the above can be cultured in artificial or synthetic medium? See, here uh, if you look the three of them, one is bacteria, fungi and third one is virus. What is peculiar with virus? See, uh, virus needs a host cell to replicate, okay, or it is not having uh, like a metabolic mechanism of its own. It is fully depending or it is totally depending upon the host cell or it needs a living cell for survival. 
So here it is saying in an artificial or synthetic medium, no, in an artificial or synthetic medium like virus cannot be cultured, virus need a living cell or it needs a host cell. So you can eliminate three so that your answer here would be option A, one and two only. Yes, bacteria and fungi, they can be cultured in artificial or synthetic medium. Yes, 40 second question. With reference to palm oil, with reference to palm oil, consider the following statements. The palm oil tree is native to Southeast Asia. See, uh, it is native to or it is indigenous to Africa. Okay. And it has been brought to uh, the Southeast Asian parts uh, for various other purposes, but it is indigenous or it is native to Africa. So, here the first statement is wrong. If it is wrong, you can directly hit the answer option B, 2 and 3 only. Yes, palm oil is a raw material for some industries producing lipstick and perfumes. It can be a raw material for some industries to produce lipstick and perfumes. Then palm oil can be used to produce biodiesel. Again, a possibility. It can be used to produce biodiesel. Again, nothing wrong in that. It's saying about a possibility. So, your answer here should be option B, 2 and 3 only. Next question. With reference to India, Didwana... Kuchaman, Sargol and Katu are the names of, okay, so those people uh, who are uh, to the northwestern part of our country, they will be more familiar with these names. Uh, see, these are the salt water lakes or saline lakes in the state of Rajasthan. So, it is actually option D. See, here you can, uh, if you know that these are related or these are related with the uh, northwestern oil does and you can eliminate glaciers and mangrove areas there and next the rest is Ramsar sites and saline lakes and Ramsar sites we have extensively uh, read about Ramsar sites and we have we know that which all are the Ramsar sites in our country and know where we have come across these names so easily you can eliminate option C as well so D saline lakes is your answer this next question, yes, again another question where uh, the uh, solving of previous year questions might have helped you um, if you have solved the question, the previous year question. See, this question says, leaf litter decomposes faster than in any other biome and as a result, the soil surface is often almost bare. Apart from trees, the vegetation is largely composed of plant forms that reach up into the canopy and climbing the trees or growing as epiphytes rooted on the upper branches of the trees. This is the most likely description of. So here, see if you read that description, two main things you can note. One is with regard to decomposition. It is saying that it is having the highest or faster rate of decomposition when we uh, compare it with the other biomes and the second thing that you can notice with regard to epiphytes okay so if you can relate these two then you can uh, move on to the answer so conveniently so easily see decomposition rate to uh, for having a faster decomposition rate like optimum moisture or optimum uh, humid conditions are required and uh, see in tropical rainforest, that conditions are optimal. It is apt for faster decomposition. Why? Because in rainforest, we know it is it experiences heavy rainfall, right? Even if you are not uh, like uh, this particular logic is not coming into your mind. See the last uh, area of that particular description. It is saying about epiphytes. You can find vast number of epiphytes in this bio. Again, if you have solved the previous year question, there was a previous year question with regard to tropical um, rainforest where there was a statement connecting this epiphyte. So, if you have solved that particular previous year question, then definitely in your mind, this epiphyte will come connecting the tropical uh, um, rainforest itself. Okay, we have discussed this particular previous year question while uh, we were... Um, dealing with our biomes module as well okay in our class so that is option d tropical rainforest is your answer see how many questions you have got uh, till now just by uh, solving the previous year questions see 
I think uh, three questions. Okay, six marks matter. Again, uh, next question. Which one of the following is used in preparing a natural mosquito repellent? Congress grass, elephant grass, lemon grass, nut grass. You know, you may not be aware about like um, fully aware about this particular uh, these grasses or like which which one is the natural mosquito repellent. But see, just try to connect things. Just try to connect the terms. Here it is saying about a natural mosquito repellent. So. Uh, here see option C lemongrass if you can connect that particular term uh, lemongrass is used as a natural mosquito repellent mainly because of its aroma or because of its distinct smell. Uh, so that is why it is known as lemongrass itself. So if you can uh, relate that particular term with uh, mosquitoes then you can actually come to the answer or you can just logically think that okay this might be the answer and you could have taken the risk and definitely option C is the answer which is lemongrass. Okay, lemongrass is because of its aroma or because of its distinct smell it is being used as a natural mosquito repellent. So, it is option C. Next question, consider the following kinds of organisms. Yes, here it is asking which of the above are primary producers in the food chains of oceans. We have discussed this in our uh, class that is in our aquatic biomes class we have seen which all are forming the producers or the first level of uh, or the first trophic level, orga or level organism in the aquatic biome the aquatic ecosystem we have seen okay it is the phytoplankton and mainly the cyanobacteria or the blue and algae and the diatoms are forming the phytoplankton so they form the uh, trophic level first trophic level okay we have discussed in our class sessions and we have also like discussed certain previous year questions as well we have uh, solved many more questions so here definitely you can directly hit the answer which is option b two and three cyanobacteria and diatoms they are the uh, primary producers in the food chains of oceans see so there are some uh, stress upon the static areas as well grassland ecosystem then uh, see here it is asking about the food chain the uh, primary producers so you have to be uh, very thorough with the basic concepts so with the static portion as well question number 73 yes to reduce the chance of being captured by predators which of the above organisms rolls up or roll up and protects or protect its or their vulnerable parts so uh, in our important species part we have seen many species which is uh, like which has got significance because of various reasons and we have seen pangolin we if you if if you know like uh, how pangolin looks or um, it has got scales ma made of keratin and it rolls up or it uh, rolls up into a shape like that of a board um, as a part of its self defense to protect itself from predators so pangolin no doubt pangolin is there if you have got some basic idea of pangolin then definitely you can say that pangolin is there we have also seen about pangolin in our important species uh, class then the uh, like the confusion is whether hedgehog is there or marmot is there okay so marmot is like it is uh, relatively large uh, squirrel but hedgehog it is a uh, mammal itself and it has got like spines all over its uh, body like that of a porcupine so hedgehog is also having that particular characteristics of uh, rolling up into uh, like a um, uh, bowl like shape in order to protect itself uh, from the predators so hedgehog is also there and pangolin is also there so your answer here is option d one and three yes one and three is your answer uh, next question with reference to the new york declaration on forest which of the following statements are correct it was first endorsed at the united nations climate summit in 2014 yes that's a right statement it endorses a global timeline to end the loss of forest yes it is uh, like it is having the obligation to uh, half the loss of natural like loss of natural forest by 2020 and completely end it by the year 2030 so 
and the second statement if you read you can see that it is saying about some aim or mandate of that particular declaration so uh, second statement it is right see when you come to third statement it is saying it is a legally binding international declaration see new york declaration on forest it is not that widely heard or like you may not be uh, some of you may not be familiar with this particular declaration but if it was a legally uh, binding international uh, declaration then obviously we would have come across it many times okay we know there are some important uh, well, there are some important declaration or important agreements which are legally binding okay that we might have come across many times but such a declaration that is new york declaration on forest if it was legally binding we might have come across it many times so if you can uh, connect it in such a way then you can say that three will be wrong here okay we only have some uh, very limited number of agreements and uh, declarations which is legally binding so here no new york declaration on forest is not legally binding it is non binding and it is voluntary in nature so which means third statement here is wrong so if you can uh, come to such a conclusion you can eliminate option b option c both are having the remaining options a and d are having two so anyway two is right and if you um, if you go with the fourth statement see fourth statement says it is endorsed by governments big companies and indigenous communities yes most often uh, the declarations and agreements you can see it, uh, now it is being endorsed by the governments big companies and other organizations as well okay so here your answer is option a 1 2 and 4 it is 1 2 and 4 3 is wrong it is not legally binding and 5 is also wrong okay not its signatory now uh, 75th question uh, yeah it says about magnetite particles magnetite particles sus suspected to cause neurodegenerative problems are generated as environmental pollutants from which of the following brakes of motor vehicles engines of motor vehicles microwave stoves within homes power plants telephone lines okay so it is uh, asking about the magnetite particles and it is causing like uh, environmental pollution okay they are generated as environmental pollutants so even if you are not that much thorough with with like uh, what is magnetite particles and all you from the question itself you have come to know that it is an environmental pollutant now look the op options which all can be possible here Brakes of motor vehicles, yes. Engines of motor vehicles, microwave stoves within homes, power plants, yes. The only, if, if at all there is a doubt, it will be with regard to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, it, will, it can be there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 is coming only in option D. So, we will go with option D, all of the above. Okay. Next question, which one of the following is a filter feeder? Okay, so filter feeder... Uh, are those organisms which filters they, that is they are feeding uh, through the process of filtration that is they filter the food they filter mainly they filter the water and then they take up the food from it so here catfish octopus oyster pelican so the right answer here it is oyster so it is like uh, there are many questions which has got an inclination more towards like the biology part than the ecology part as well okay so there is such an inclination also when you uh, go through the questions you can see it yes next question from biogeochemical cycles a very basic question uh, from the very basic part we have dealt biogeochemical cycles as a very separate module and we have seen each and every bio important biogeochemical cycles there and we know that uh, there are like mainly two types of uh, nutrient cycle cycles that is the gaseous cycles and sedimentary cycles and yes the sedimentary cycles mainly there the source of release of nutrient they are, they are mainly trapped upon the rocks so here though phosphorus and sulfur cycles both of them are sedimentary cycles but see when we compare it is asking here um, the weathering of rocks is the main source of release of nutrient to enter cycle which one it is main source of uh, uh, like main source of release of nutrients with regard to weathering of rocks it is option c phosphorus cycle we have discussed it in our class 
phosphorus we know there is no gaseous presence of uh, phosphorus in the atmosphere it is like the main source is just weathering itself so option c is your answer which of the following are yeah detritivores so with regard to detritivores again we have uh, discussed in our class like which is uh, the like decomposers detritivores in our food chain class we have discussed everyone must be knowing that earthworms anyway it will be there and if you look the other options you look for similar organisms which you can relate with earthworms it is just millipers and wood lice okay jellyfish sea horses no it cannot be there in the detritivores category detritivores are those which are feeding upon the detritus so here it is earthworms millipers wood lice 1 3 and 5 only Yes, next is common carbon metric which is supported by UNEP has been developed for. So, this particular uh, question you can attempt if you have uh, gone through this particular area. So, common carbon metric it is uh, mainly used for assessing the carbon footprint uh, which is coming out of the building operations across the world, okay, around the world. So, that is the answer. Option A is your answer. Next question, which of the following has following have species that can establish symbiotic relationship with other organisms symbiotic relationship with other organisms so here see symbiosis we have uh, studied in our uh, biotic interactions uh, classes in, in that particular session we have seen what is uh, what are the different types of biotic interactions that exist in our uh, biodiversity we have uh, seen such biotic interaction different biotic interactions are there and one among them is the symbiosis mutualism so here yes all of the three that is um, cnidarians fungi protozoa with, with regard to fungi there is no doubt we know that lichens uh, which is a symbiotic relationship between the fungus and the algae so with regard to fungi there is no much doubt for us so, it is 1, 2 and 3. Yes, protozoa is also there. So, your answer is option D, 1, 2 and 3. Yes, next question. R2 code of practices. See, here also if you can apply just a logic or if you can just um, see that particular uh, insight from that question, then you can actually take up the risk. And definitely you will be rewarded. Why? Because it is saying R2 code of practices. See the uh, options. First, it is saying that environmentally responsible practices in electronics recycling. Responsible practices in electronics recycling. Responsible recycling. B says ecological management of wetlands of international importance under the Ramsar Convention. C we have studied Ramsar Convention, we have studied like uh, all the things in relation with Ramsar Convention, wetlands of international importance, Monterey record, uh, the um, newly added uh, Ramsar sites. Whenever we have dealt with the Ramsar Convention, nowhere we have seen such a thing like R2 code of practices. So it will not be there. So easily you can eliminate option B. Coming to C, sustainable practices in the cultivation of agricultural crops in degraded lands and d environmental impact assessment in the exploitation of natural resources so see in these when you re, uh, read all these options the first option says environmentally responsible practices in electronics recycling industry so if you can clearly uh, decipher from the first option there is responsible recycling that responsible recycling is what is actually referred to as R2, responsible recycling R2. So, if you can decipher, if you can apply that logic, definitely you can take the risk and go with A and A is your answer. Okay, so there will be some hidden details like this which you can, uh, you, if you are at peace, then you can find out such hidden details from the options, provided you have a peace of mind. Now, uh, next question. Why is there a concern about copper smelting plants? Yes. Uh, so, with regard to this particular question, this asks me about copper smelting plants. So, copper smelting it is used to extract the base uh, metal from its ore by heating, by uh, using or by applying heat. 
Now, uh, with regard to the uh, statements, the first says that they may release lethal quantities of carbon monoxide into the environment. Carbon monoxide is being released, uh, but the first statement says they are releasing, they may release uh, lethal quantities of carbon monoxide. Second statement says the copper slag can cause the leaching of some heavy metals into the environment. Yes, leaching of heavy metals into the environment, that is a, a uh, like it is a possibility that is that is there it is saying it can cause so the saying about a possibility and it can be there they may release the sulfur dioxide as a pollutant yes it is saying about copper like um, smelting plants they may release sulfur dioxide as a pollutant yes that is a may very much cause of concern as well okay so three is also there so two and three they are like general possibilities anyway two and three is there now the confusion is with regard to the first statement so, the first statement says they may release lethal quantities of carbon monoxide into the environment. So, it is like if you are going with one, it is like, yeah, it is also saying about a possibility like they may release lethal quantities, it may release lethal quantities of uh, carbon monoxide. But see, um, if it is, if it is, if, if it has got that particular possibility of uh, release of lethal quanti uh, quantities of carbon monoxide, then it is like, it is a controversial area. Okay, so um, there, there is a chance like it can be either one, two, or three. But since that lethal quantities, that extreme word is there, you can eliminate one and you can arrive at B two and three. Okay, let's wait for the UPSC key. So here. Uh, now, we can just move on with option B, 2 and 3 only, we can uh, move on with option B, uh, let us wait for the UPSC key, uh, why because here the first statement says about a possibility, but there like extreme condition is being mentioned like lethal quantities of carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide is released, but lethal quantities of carbon monoxide is a question that is needed to be considered, okay. so. Uh, as of now, we will go with option B, 2 and 3 only. With reference to furnace oil, consider the following statements. Yes, here furnace oil, it is the uh, like it is the residual fuel from the oil refinery. So, it is a product of oil refineries, definitely yes. Some industries use it to generate power. Yes, some industries generate power it, power from it. Then it use, uh, its use is cause sulfur emissions into the environment. Again, it is uh, like a major cause of concern like release of sulfur into the environment, sulfur emissions into the environment. Uh, why? Because it is the residual fuel, okay, residual fuel uh, from the refineries. So, definitely uh, 3 is also there, your answer will be option D, 1, 2 and 3. Another question about blue carbon, very, very easy question. We have seen what is blue carbon, what is black carbon, brown carbon. Uh, so, it is, it is a very, very uh, like easy question, uh, very easy to hit question it was like what is blue carbon, it is carbon captured by yeah oceans and coastal ecosystem, nothing much to worry about that particular question 89A is your answer. Next question, in the nature which of the following is or are the most likely to be found surviving on a surface without soil, okay. So see in this particular question again. We have to wait for the UPSC key for that particular um, authentic answer. But here see, fern, lichen, moss, mushroom. Okay, so here it is asking most likely to be found surviving on a surface without soil. Okay, most likely to be found. So here, anyway, lichen is most likely to be found. We, we know that lichens are the pioneer species uh, in an like ecosystem where they um, without the presence of soil in bare rocks in, on barren surface they can actually uh, start the process of uh, ecological succession so lichens anyway is there okay now uh, mushroom can also grow like we have seen mushroom growing without the requirement of soil but here it is asking most likely to be found and there is no option which is uh, having like 2 and 4 okay there is no such option so such a possibility we can rule out now uh, the option which is having 2 that is lichens anyway it is there that is b and c only okay it can be b or c in c it is 
3 is also there that is moses also there so ferns and moses uh, see they they are like ferns and moses they are seen growing in uh, soil as well okay a small substrate of soil in that soil also moses and ferns can survive so here the most likely to be found surviving on a surface without soil since it is asking in such a manner we can say that we will go with uh, option b two only that is lichen so okay lichen and uh, option c two and three is also slightly confusing but we will go with option b two only since it is asking most likely to be found surviving on a surface without soil so we will go with lichen yeah so that was uh, the questions from environment and related topics uh, you have seen that many questions were so direct were uh, easy to um, handle questions but there were some tricky questions as well uh, anyway the majority of questions the 90% uh, of questions from environment and related parts uh, like ex except for two or three questions you could have easily uh, scored from the environment part okay uh, if you have even scored like solved the previous year questions those uh, three questions directly you could have uh, get okay so that's it with regard to environment and related topics uh, you will get uh, like the analysis of the other questions from the other uh, subjects uh, as soon as possible so that's it thank you